A biological community is an assemblage of populations of various species living close enough for potential interaction. An important aspect of community ecology is interspecific interactions, which I've covered in my previous video. Other important aspects of community ecology includes species diversity and trophic structure. Species diversity of a community is a variety of organisms that make up the community. It has two components, species richness and relative abundance. Species richness is the total number of different species in the community, whereas relative abundance is the proportion each species represents of the total individuals in the community. Species diversity is affected by three key factors. First, species richness varies along a latitudinal gradient, where species richness is generally highest in the tropics and lowest in the poles, due to the fact that tropical communities are generally older than temperate or polar communities. As a result, the tropics have a longer evolutionary history for speciation to occur. Climate is likely the primary cause of the latitudinal gradient in biodiversity. Species richness generally correlates with a community's rate of evapotranspiration which is a function of solar radiation, temperature, and water availability, all of which are abundant in the tropics. Another factor that influences biodiversity is the area effects. Generally, a larger geographic area has more species. Lastly, the island equilibrium model states that species richness on an island levels off at a dynamic equilibrium point, in which the rate of immigration balances the rate of extinction. Species richness also depends on island size and the distance from mainland. The larger the island size, the higher the diversity, and the longer distance from the mainland, the lower the diversity. Trophic structure is the feeding relationships between organisms in a community. Food chains link trophic levels from producers to top carnivores. An example of terrestrial food chains involves plants as primary producer, herbivores such as insects as primary consumer, carnivores such as frog as secondary consumers, snakes as tertiary consumers, and eagles as quaternary consumers. An example of aquatic food chains involves biosynthetic microorganisms phytoplankton as primary producer, zooplankton as primary consumer, carnivores such as shrimps as secondary consumers, different types of raven fishes as tertiary consumers, and sharks as quaternary consumers. Food chains are usually only a few links long, which can be explained by two hypotheses. The energetic hypothesis suggests that length is limited by inefficiency energy transfer. Since only about 10% of the energy stored in the organic matter of each trophic level is converted to organic matter at the next trophic level, other energy is involved in metabolism or wasted as heat. The dynamic stability hypothesis proposes that long food chains are less stable than shorter ones. Certain species have a very large impact on community structure. Dominant species are those that are most abundant or have the highest biomass, which is the total mass of all individuals in a population. Dominant species exert powerful control over the occurrence and distribution of other species. Invasive species typically introduced to a new environment by humans often lack predators or disease pathogens. Therefore, they often disrupt ecosystem dynamics by outcompeting or displacing native population. Keystone species exert strong control on a community by their ecological roles, despite not necessarily being abundant in the community. For example, sea otters are keystone predators in the North Pacific. Foundation species are ecosystem engineers that cause physical changes in the environment that affect community structure. For example, beaver dams can transform landscapes on a very large scale. There are two models that examine community organization. The bottom-up model proposes a unidirectional influence from lower to higher trophic levels. For example, the presence or absence of mineral nutrients determines community structure, including abundance of primary producers. On the other hand, the top-down model, also called the trophic cascade model, proposes that control comes from the trophic level above. For example, predators control herbivores, which in turn control primary producers. A disturbance is an event that changes a community, removes organisms from it, and alters resource availability. The non-equilibrium model describes community as constantly changing after disturbances. Fire is a significant large-scale disturbance in most terrestrial ecosystems. It is often a necessity in some communities. The intermediate disturbance hypothesis suggests that moderate levels of disturbance can foster greater diversity than either high or low levels of disturbance. Ecological succession is the sequence of community and ecosystem changes after a disturbance over time. Primary succession occurs 
where no soil exists when succession begins. It involves pioneer organisms such as lichen to serve as the foundation of the community to build soil. Secondary succession begins in an area where soil remains after a disturbance or disaster such as fire or fuel abandonment. Early arriving species and later arriving species may be linked in one of the three processes. Early arrivals may facilitate appearance of later species by making the environment more favorable. Early arrivals may also inhibit establishment of later species, or they may tolerate later species but have no impact on their establishment. Ecological communities are universally affected by pathogens, which include disease-causing microorganisms, viruses, viroids, and prions. Pathogens can alter a community structure quickly and extensively. For example, coral reef communities can be decimated by white band disease. Zoonotic pathogens are pathogens that have been transferred from other animals to humans. It can be direct transfer or through an intermediate species called a vector. 